As an introduction to how the rejection region method is different, I've listed out the steps. And so we're still going to set up our null and alternative hypotheses. And we're going to now, instead of a p-value, we're going to calculate a test statistic. And actually, this test statistic is also on the calculator. When you do a p-value, if you notice above it is either a Z or a T, that's the same test statistic as we'll calculate. You can do it either way using the formula or the calculator. From this, we're going to determine a rejection region, and that will be dependent on alpha and which test we're using. Then we're going to compare our test statistic to the region to determine what we do, and then, as usual, we're going to interpret it. Now, the question is, what about this rejection region? Well, it depends on uh, which test you're using, although the Z and T distributions look very, very similar. So let's say that it's a Z test. If it's left-tailed, what we're going to do is we're going to place alpha in the left-hand tail. And so my mean is zero for the Z distribution. And so somewhere out here, we'll put alpha right here. And then we're going to say what Z alpha would have that area to the left. And that's going to be actually, we can use inverse normal to find that. And then we're going to have our test statistic. And if it's in this white region, we're going to say, okay, fail to reject. If it's over here, we're going to say we reject. And what that's doing is identical to the textbook. In the left tail test, if, if our test statistic is less than the critical value, then we reject. The only difference with the T test as well, the distribution is technically slightly different. We have uh, heavier tails in the distribution, but the mean is still zero. So when we really look at it, you can't see much of a difference. We still put alpha on the left-hand side. And now you have a T alpha. Now this T alpha comes from a different table, which I'll show you. And degrees of freedom is N minus 1, and that helps us determine what T alpha is. But once again, the shaded region is a rejection region. Since they're so similar for the next couple, I won't draw both. I'll just say it will be T or Z alpha. So for a right-tailed test, you'll draw your distribu distribution. It'll either be a T or a Z. And then you're going to say, OK, my alpha goes on the right-hand side. Then you're going to determine which T alpha or Z alpha would be your cutoff here. And then we'll have our test statistic, and we'll see where does it end up on this picture. And then finally, if we have a two-tailed test, we're going to draw our rejection region with half alpha over here. We're going to actually have two cutoffs and half of alpha over here. And then our cutoffs are going to be either a negative T alpha and a positive T alpha, or a negative Z alpha and a positive Z alpha. This time, it'll be either if our test statistic is either less than the negative or bigger than the positive that we reject. But again, you don't really have to think in those terms if you draw yourself a good picture. 